immunotherapy and GI malignancies, there's a lot of promise there, but there's been a lot of challenges. And part of that has emerged because, I, in my mind, I think that the, the gut is where 70% uh, of the immune system resides. And one of the key challenges for the immune system is trying to decide whether or not to become activated or to remain tolerant. Uh, and there are a lot of pathogens, commensal organisms that are in the gut for which the immune system has to do this on an everyday basis. And so cancer in the GI tract has largely found ways in which to co-opt that tolerance mechanisms uh, to evade immune recognition um, and that creates a challenge for utilizing immune therapy. There are subsets of patients that do s appear to respond to immune therapy and those are ones that have um, mismatched repair deficiency so they have defects and uh, mismatched repair genes and those tumors by and large have larger mu numbers of mutations uh, associated with their cancer and so um, that in and of itself means that those tumors look more non-self uh, and that's a uh, alert to the immune system to try to come and attack it. And so their checkpoint therapies that target PD-1 and PD-01 have been quite successful. But you know, most patients with GI malignancies do not respond. Um, pancreas cancer, the vast majority do not, do not respond to immune therapy. Um, colorectal cancer, those that do not have the mismatch repair deficiency, the majority do not respond. Um, gastroesophageal, the majority still do not respond. And so uh, finding ways in which to condition tumors for improved res in responses to immune therapy I think is the next step. And it's not just combinations, of those therapies, but how do we strategically sequence therapies to move a tumor that's resistant to one that eventually is sensitive, whether it's sensitive to immune therapy or sensitive to cytotoxic therapies. Um, inflammation in the immune system is a key player in defining that, um, that balance.